Good morning, sir. Lieutenant Colonel Jill Long. Uh, do you believe the primary focus of land power or the primary advantage is to own and occupy land or to shape the human environment? And if you put the emphasis on the shaping the human environment, would that change the calculus of how they're involved in the Pacific? I'm not sure. If you could just remain standing for a second, if you would tell me what it means to shape the human environment. It's a very vague term to me. What does it mean to shape the human environment? It is, sir. It, we could have a long discussion on that, but I think the uh, root of it applies to that the Army, the land power, has a very specific skill of being able to touch uh, people on an individual level that land or air power and excuse me, naval power does not. Okay. I, I don't believe that at all, with all due respect. Uh, I believe that armies should not get in the business of shaping the human environment uh, and making arguments about uh, uh, reaching out to people and doing all sorts of good things. Our armies are machines that are designed to go out and win wars uh, and to kill people. Uh, and, and to protect the American national interest. That's what armies are for. You know, in this politically correct environment that we operate in, you have to tell all these stories about how you're shaping the human environment uh, and doing all these social goods. But that's not what armies are for. And the point I would make is once you start thinking in those terms, that's when you get into nation building, right? The American body politic has this deep-seated belief that the American model is a really wonderful thing, and if we could just export it to the rest of the world, we would all live happily ever after. Right? This was the principal thesis of Frank Fukuyama's very famous article, The End of History. Right? If you go back and re people should go back and read or reread The End of History. What Fukuyama was saying was that in the first half of the 20th century, we had defeated fascism, and in the second half, of the 20th century, we had defeated communism. And it appeared that what this meant was that liberal democracy was now going to sweep all across the globe. In fact, that it swept across Europe and assorted places in Asia. And with the passage of time, more and more countries would become liberal, democrat, liberal democracies. And in fact, what Frank was saying is they would become like the United States. And that meant we would live in a very peaceful world because, as you all know, we are the good guys, and if everybody else looks like us, that means the world is populated with benevolent states, and we all live happily ever after. And that's why Frank said the biggest problem that we're going to face in the future is boredom. I mean, there's not going to be any war. It's the end, that's the end of history because everybody looks like the United States. Well, not surprisingly, many Americans, this is before Afghanistan and Iraq, uh, and certainly after what appeared to be this great victory in Afghanistan in the fall of 2001, thought that the United States could use its military instrument to go out and speed up that process. That was, that was the name of the game, to speed up the process. Right? And what we're talking about doing is shaping the human environment. Right? We're talking about doing social engineering. Right? Anytime you get into social engineering, you are asking for enormous trouble, right? The world is an incredibly complicated place to begin with. And trying to fix broken countries or trying to transform autocracies into democracies is a really tricky business. And Frank Fukuyama, to his credit, opposed the Iraq war because he understood this, right? Very, very difficult to do. Uh, the other thing is, as I said before, we live in a world where democracy is not the most powerful political ideology on the planet. The most powerful political ideology on the planet is nationalism. Right? And when you go into countries and you start to do social engineering, people get their backs up. Nationalism is all about self-determination. Think about those words, self-determination. Iraqis want to figure out for themselves what kind of government they're going to have. They don't want Americans telling them how they should arrange their politics. So you just get into all sorts of problems. So I like to think about the American military, especially the American army, as an instrument that crushes adversaries, that wins quick and decisive victories, right? And I think once you start talking about using it as a social, an instrument for social change, you're asking for big trouble. 